Hi, I'm uh, Rami Kumrutti, and uh, I'm discussing how do I treat my MDS patients. So MDS, or myodysplastic syndromes, are a group of blood diseases characterized by low blood counts and the complications as a result of low blood counts, and a tendency of the disease in certain number of patients to progress to acute myeloid leukemia. Typically, the first step is really assuring the diagnosis. Patients present with low blood counts, we do work up to rule out nutritional deficiencies and getting a bone marrow aspect biopsy, get a lot of information regarding the disease from that. Uh, there are conditions that can mimic MDS. Once we establish the diagnosis for MDS, I think the most next important step is really the risk stratification or the staging of the disease, where we assess the risk of the disease in terms of potential of transformation to leukemia or being life-threatening disease. We look at the percentage of blasts or leukemia cells in the bone marrow, the chromosome makeup, the blood counts, and nowadays we incorporate the molecular features of the disease. So we use a staging system called IPSSM, International Prognostic Scoring System with Molecular Information. At the end, we think of the disease as a higher risk disease or a lower risk disease. The higher risk disease is unfortunately a life-threatening disease with a high chance of transformation to acute myeloid leukemia, we typically use hypomethylating agents, and we think of allogeneic stem cell transplant as the only curative option. Transplant can cure 40 to 50% of the patients, but the procedure is intense. It has around 20% transplant-related mortality, so we have to weigh the benefit and the risk of the procedure. If patients are higher risk, they benefit from this procedure going early into the transplant. If patients are lower risk, the maximum gain of survival is going to transplant later on in the course of the disease. Hypomethylating agents are the backbone for treating higher risk patients in most of the cases, and there, have, there are several trials ongoing to try to improve that backbone. Now, half of the patients or more than that are really what we call a lower risk. So those patients, the disease is not life-threatening on the short term. The major issue is complications of low blood counts. Uh, some patients end to be transfusion dependent, needing blood on a regular basis. Uh, anemia is the hallmark of the disease. 90% of MDS patients are anemic. And over time, more than half of the patients will become needing red blood cell transfusion on a regular basis. Anemia impacts quality of life, functional status of the patient. And you know, transfusion dependency or improvement of anemia is associated with improvement in quality of life. And we do think also that it may improve indirectly the patient's survival and the disease. So in, in most of the cases, we are treating anemia in the lower risk. And usually the first step are treatments called erythroid stimulating agents. And this is erythropoietin, a hormone naturally produced by the kidney that we give higher doses in different forms. And roughly one third of the patients will respond for a year or so. Once that stops working, the next question we ask, what type of MDS we are dealing with? If patients have a unique type called deletion 5Q, which means chromosome 5 in those MDS cells is chipped out, then there is a treatment called linalidomide that had been the standard of care for those patients. If patients don't have deletion 5Q, but they have on the bone marrow a morphology called sidroblast or ring sidroblasts, uh, those are cells that stain under iron with some iron deposits around the nucleus. That's a favorable subtype of MDS, but known to have anemia. For those patients, we have the most recent uh, approved drug by FDA called Luspatercept. That's a drug that will enhance the red blood cell production. And it's been proven to be effective in this subtype. It's an injection every three weeks, well tolerated, no major adverse events, and around 40% of the patients would respond to that. If patients don't have deletion 5Q or ring sidroblasts, then the next question, if patients are young and they don't have the disease for a long time, sometimes we do treatments that suppress the immune system. Those are usually use useful, again, in patients that are uh, on the younger uh, side of age. For other patients, sometimes we still use linalidomide uh, you know, for treatment of anemia if they only have anemia. And hypomethylating agents, at least in the United States, are used if patients have concomitant low platelets or low neutrophils, or as the last step for managing that. Obviously, there are several efforts to improve the outcomes. Uh, built on that, there are ongoing trials. Uh, the COMMANDS trial is looking at this Luspatercept to move it up front to see if it's better even strategy to start with that in all patients. We have novel agents and drugs such as Mtilistat, Roxadistat, that we are testing uh, to improve the outcomes for patients. 
Rarely we encounter patients that their main issue is low platelets with a risk of bleeding. Sometimes for those patients, we use agents, we call them uh, thrombopoietin stimulating agents to improve the platelet count. And less often we deal with neutropenia, low white count that puts the patient at risk of infection. And for those, we really don't have many active therapies. Um, we use hypomethylating agents, immunosuppressive uh, agents. Uh, so we've made a lot of discoveries in understanding the disease. There are new classifications, new risk certification, and our treatment options are also developing uh, for treatment of this disease. But again, it's always important to spend time establishing the diagnosis, risk stratification, and then tailor the treatment and the selection of treatment option based on the disease. Thank you for listening. <laughs>